Hello, I'm David Harper with the BBC News. The chief of police in Haiti has said 28 people are thought to have been involved in the assassination of President Jovenel Moise on Wednesday, 26 Colombians and two Haitian Americans. Leon Charles said police were still looking for eight of the attackers. The others had either been killed or captured. Our America's editor Candace Piet reports. Police acted fast to find the killers. They were traced to a house near the presidential residence and most have now been either killed or captured. The police chief said eight were still on the run. Foreigners may have pulled the trigger, but it's not yet known who planned the attack. The acting Prime Minister, Claude Joseph, has said he believed President Moise had fallen foul of Haiti's oligarchs. The president's security detail is also being investigated. Mr Joseph has called for life to return to normal, urging shops and businesses to reopen, along with the international airport. President Biden has defended the withdrawal of US troops from Afghanistan, saying he was not prepared to send another generation of Americans to fight there. Mr Biden insisted the US military had achieved its initial goals by punishing the perpetrators of the September 11th attacks. But he accepted there was uncertainty about the future of Afghanistan as the Taliban continued to gain ground, raising the possibility of a renewed civil war. Our correspondent Secunda Kamani has this assessment. The tone that President Biden struck, he said our original mission in Afghanistan was never nation building. It was about, in his words, fighting terrorists. So I think what he's saying there is he's reacting to some of the criticism that the fragile progress that we've seen in Afghanistan over the past 20 years in women's rights, in the free media, for example, being created. You know, all of that at the moment very much hanging in the balance with the Taliban's advance. Certainly, many ordinary Afghans do feel that they are being somewhat abandoned by the Americans. South Sudan is marking the 10th anniversary of its independence with little fanfare. Its population advised to celebrate at home because of coronavirus. The only official event, a 10-kilometre run in the capital Juba. President Salva Kiir has blamed international sanctions for his country's dire straits, its economy becalmed by five years of conflict and more than a quarter of its population displaced by the fighting. South Sudan's most prominent peacemaker, Bishop Emeritus Paride Taban, said the legacy of the fight for independence was not easy to shake off. A country which has been built after suffering from many wars, still people have such feeling in their hearts. So they need a lot of healing before coming back like other countries. But the three Western countries that helped broker a peace deal accord between Mr Keir and his rival, now deputy, Riek Machar, said the South Sudanese had to recapture their initial enthusiasm for independence. BBC News. Italy has authorised the rescue ship Ocean Viking to dock in Sicily and disembark hundreds of migrants it's picked up in the Mediterranean. The humanitarian group SOS Mediterranee that operates the vessel said it had completed six rescues in three days. Since the start of the summer, there's been an increase in crossings from North Africa. The Olympic torch relay has reached Tokyo Prefecture two weeks before the Games begin. No crowds were allowed in to watch as the flame was carried on stage in a lantern and handed to the governor of Tokyo, Yuriko Koike. There'll be no spectators too at the arenas in the city hosting the bulk of Olympic events. The organising committee has shut them out because of fears over coronavirus. Here's Mariko Oi. The capital, Tokyo, has been seeing a growing number of new infections, especially that very infectious Delta variant in recent days. And that's why the government uh, last night announced the fourth state of emergency starting on Monday, uh, ending uh, on the 22nd of August, basically meaning that it covers the entire duration of the Olympics. And after that, we heard from the organizers that as a result, they're not going to allow any spectators inside the stadiums are making this game the first one ever to be held uh, behind closed doors. Rescue crews have recovered 10 more bodies from the rubble of an apartment block in the US city of Miami, taking the number of confirmed victims to 64. A total of 76 people remain missing. A U.S. lawyer who represented the porn star Stormy Daniels in lawsuits against the former president Donald Trump has been sentenced to two and a half years in prison for trying to extort money from the sportswear company Nike. In February, Michael Avenatti was found guilty of threatening to publicise alleged evidence of bribery by Nike unless it paid him millions of dollars. Nike denied any wrongdoing. BBC News. <laughs> 